I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while and this is going to be very off the cuff and just nothing is planned, nothing is written down, but I'm just getting sick and tired of people saying that, oh, Kratos finally has depth, the new God of War, it just, it just really humanizes Kratos and it's so strange, it just makes me think, have you played any of the other previous titles? And I'm starting to think that a lot of people that are saying stuff like that, they haven't. Either that or people are just, or probably both, or just parodying other talking points. They don't have a another thought in their entire body. And then so they just have to like, you know, okay, somebody said this and I'm just going to say it too. Because a lot of people aren't very creative. It's really weird to say stuff like that because from the very first game, there was a lot of depth. And there was Kratos really showing a lot of humanity from the very, very beginning of just his motivation for even how he got into the into into the mess in the first place where you have a guy just just a great warrior about to meet his end and you know especially when it comes to spartans you know that they would want to you know win over everything and of course dying a glorious death is good too but if there's a chance to succeed you know they'll take it you just go out until you absolutely can't do anything else and so what he did was he called upon Ares because he just wanted to win. And that's like just the trump card. And he essentially sold his soul. And of course, Ares answered him knowing that Kratos was such a great warrior. And he thought he can be the ultimate warrior. The only thing he has to do is cut all ties, cut all emotions. So Ares thought of a plan to trick him and made Kratos kill his own family. Thinking that now that they're not... A problem now that they're not around anymore you can completely focus on just being the best warrior possible which obviously backfired because this is what humanized him even more than ever slaughtering his own family you know not doing it on purpose and it just it, it internally murdered him and then of course having a constant reminder of having his ashes fastened to his body the ashes of his dead family fashion fashioned to his body you know so that's something that's just gonna haunt him forever and the thing is, he wanted the memories taken away, right? Started doing deeds for the gods, and all he wanted was just the memories taken away that haunted him. And it, it was really interesting because it really shows like the psychological, you know, struggle that he has because, dude, you have the memories, but something is still going to remain, the, 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 your skin. And you may not remember, but people are going to remind you so you're you're still cursed no matter what and i always thought that was really interesting because i'm like dude there's there's no escaping this but anyway the gods betrayed him and then he just went on a war path that's where a lot of people get this this thing about oh kratos is just this brutal guy that's just crazy and stuff and he just wants to murder he just has all this bloodlust and it's like not necessarily yeah he was doing a lot of stuff especially when he was in service to Ares, but he didn't become extremely murderous until you know he got betrayed by the gods when it's like kill Ares and then we'll forgive you and he thought forgiving was going to be like you're going to take the memories away because that's what he wanted but Athena never said yes I'm going to take your memories away which totally screwed him over so he became vengeful he became angry and bitter and started just doing a bunch of stuff that Ares was doing so then they had to stop him betray him and then so his bloodlust grew even more just hating the gods and then eventually kills them all you know took three games but in between there were so many different things going on you had even uh things like uh, chains of olympus the psp exclusive where th there was like say you see the humanity because he actually got to meet calliope his daughter you know and see just how humanized he was i can even go back to just the very first game when he's actually facing Ares. when he's facing Ares, he, there's an illusion that he has a chance to save his family and of course he does it and he's so triumphant he's like hell yeah but then you know of course Ares just shows like nope sorry bro this was just an illusion this is just magic he you know has them killed again and then there's just this really really beautiful moment that really shows Kratos' humanity in his voice and the beautiful voice acting where he's like no not again and even back in the day back when that came out that shit hit me really hard because you really just see how destroyed he is and how defeated he is he has his blades of chaos taken away from him he is basically just cast it out you know and it's just like this is something that is very human he's broken he's not just some ravenous beast that is just almighty and powerful even though that's what he wants to be no he still is 
part human you know he is all he's he's what you would call a demigod because you'll later on find out that he's the son of zeus but it's still like he's not indestructible you know what i mean and in the third game you know just be, because he misses you know his daughter calliope obviously his wife but there is pandora pandora is destined to throw herself in the flames of olympus that is her destiny that's what she was made for and essentially, when it comes time for her to fulfill her destiny, you know, Kratos has spent enough time with her to where he sees Calliope, his daughter, in, in her. And he does not want Pandora to sacrifice herself, even though he needs it to happen. Like, he needs that to happen. That is something that's supposed to happen, right? And uh, he's just so like, no, like, don't do it. And he's just so angry that, like, it's like, I'm lo it's like he's losing another daughter, you know what I'm saying? That like there's there's countless amount of moments, there's count, countless amount of things that I could say that can really humanize him or just show how in depth he is and how how like how many different angles he has to him and how complex Kratos is. He's a fantastic character. Sure, these games are very, you know, an action adventure, very hack and slashy, but insanely fun. I just think what we have in the back of our heads with the latest one is everybody highly praised The Last of Us. You had The Last of Us, which was just, oh, just huge critically acclaimed. And so you had that dynamic of the father and daughter, you know. And so it's like, why not do this? You even had uh, that one indie film that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger did, Maggie, where it was just like that. A bearded guy, kind of looked like Joel a little bit, had a little girl that he had to protect. You know, there was something going on with her. And then so you had kind of the same thing. Instead of it being like a daughter, though, it's just, you know, Kratos' son, Atreus. And so he has to protect him. And it's just that whole, you know, parental dynamic. And then it just seems like he's just much more in depth. But it's the same deal. He lost his wife or his girl again, you know. And then obviously he's going to do whatever it takes to protect his kid. And who knows what's going to happen in the sequel. Knowing that his uh, son was also meant to be Loki, something that they threw in. It's going to make things a little bit more complex. And we all got a little bit of hint of him being mischievous when he found out that he was a god. Atreus started acting a fool in uh, the latest game. And I think that, you know, it may come back again. And so I'm looking forward to it. I thought the game was fantastic. I thought it rivals or it actually it does surpass the third game because uh, the third God of War I thought was absolutely fantastic. I remember the first time I played it. My jaw was just wide open the entire time, just the opening. I thought this game looks absolutely gorgeous. Still holds up the remaster, looks beautiful. And then this third game was just, I couldn't have asked for anything more. And then what they did with this latest one is they took the best elements out of a lot of the most popular games and then put it in here. Even the way that you, you fight now, the way that the buttons are set up kind of reminded me of the Souls games. And just the difficulty, if you up the difficulty, it is incredibly challenging. And, uh, and and the games are always pretty hard when you up the difficulty in God of War. My main point is that if you played all of the games, you know, especially even Ghost of Sparta, the other PSP exclusive, where you finally get to meet Kratos' uh, brother, Deimos, which is something that they hinted in the original game where they were like, oh... He was, uh, he had, he had, he had a brother. Oh, what's going to happen? Is this going to be a part of the second game? No, it turns out they just made it a PSP exclusive. But I thought that was actually a pretty good game too, especially at the very end when you tag team with, with your brother. It's really cool. I really appreciated this entire franchise. It's definitely one of my favorites. You know, the only thing that I really enjoyed more than this is the Mass Effect universe. Of course, I was extremely, extremely disappointed with Andromeda, but it's just... It, that is still Mass Effect. The universe is good. And then I think just the God of War franchise is good. And now it's awesome that they're branching out into something else. And I'm looking forward to heavily to see what else they got going on. Because they have not disappointed me yet. Everything that I've played so far, I've enjoyed to a certain extent. There is no, there is no God of War game where I was like, this is terrible. And that is rare when you have that many games. Because you had three, three games. You had two on the PS2, one on the PS3. And then you had, uh, oh, actually two on the PS3 because of Ascension. And then you had the two uh, PSP exclusives. That's a lot of games. Usually you'd be like, oh, some of these are trash. Now, sure, you can rank them all. But 
they all have something that you can really enjoy about them but that's it i just wanted to get that off my chest what do you guys think about it did, did you guys really enjoy the games did you even play the previous ones because i know people haven't even played them do you think people are right by saying that kratos finally has depth or do you think he's always had depth to him let me know what you guys think in the comments uh thank you very much for listening and uh you guys have a good day and take care